Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. I am Father Chris and this is W.V. Priest. In this episode, we are going to answer the question, what is an Anglican? Firstly, we would say that Anglicans are Christian. Centrally, Anglicans are Christian. And I want to unpack that a little bit. Secondly, we would say that Anglicans are Reformed. Anglicans are Reformed, and we'll unpack that a little bit as well. And lastly, we'll say that Anglicans are Catholic, are Catholic. And so let's go through the first two before we go through that third one, which might be a little bit more contentious for some of you, but trust me, it's not. So Anglicans are Christian. Central to what it means to be an Anglican is to be a follower of Jesus Christ, to bear the name, to be a follower, to be a follower of Christ, to be a Christian. Uh, the thing that holds us together is not liturgy. It's not cool vestments. It's not um, historic episcopacy or anything like this. It's fidelity and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, proclaiming his gospel, guarding and keeping his gospel, and spreading it throughout the world. And so this is the center of what it means to be Anglican. Anglicans are Christian. In four ways we are Christian. We hold to the canon of Holy Scripture. So we believe in the 66 canonical books of the Old and New Testament as the foundation of Christian doctrine and practice. So the canon of Holy Scripture. Secondly, the creeds, the creeds of the early church. Um, we can think of the ancient baptismal creeds, specifically the Apostles' Creed, um, and then later creeds like the Nicene Creed or the Nicene Constantinopolitan Creed, which more fully articulate or t articulates Christian doctrine. So we hold to the canon of Scripture, to the creeds. Thirdly, as Christians, um, we hold to the councils. And so we look back to the early church, the first four councils, the universal councils of the early church, um, for what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Um, so we have, we have canon, we have creeds, we have councils. How do we get to these things? The fourth one is that we, are, we get to all of this in and through the church, the gathered body of Jesus Christ. And so the, in the church, we receive all of this, this good deposit, the Apostle Paul says, in the canon and the creeds and the councils through a long line of faithful guardians of the gospel message reflected in reflected in the historic episcopacy which is another way to say in faithful bishops going all the way back to the first apostles and eyewitnesses of Jesus so firstly anglicans are christians secondly anglicans are reformed our anglican tradition goes way back before the 16th century, as I said earlier, but like other traditions that stem from the continental reformers, Anglicans are children of the Reformation. And this is most specifically seen in our 39 articles of religion. These 39 art articles reflect our reformed heritage. So 100 years before the Reformation, Anglicans translated the Bible into English. You can see John Wycliffe in the 14th century and later the King James Bible in 1611. In the 16th century, the first archbishop of the Anglican Church, Thomas Cranmer, he was a married man, and so this is one of the 39 articles that uh, bishops and uh, priests can be married. Um, as I am with three children. Uh, Archbishop Thomas Cranmer, the first Archbishop of the Anglican Church, compiled and wrote the first Book of Common Prayer. We, we often call this our BCP, um, and this reflects our Reformed heritage. Anglicans are Reformed. Um, and so we're aiming to get the Bible and the great tradition into the hearts and minds of every follower of Christ, every Christian, and that's what we do in the Book of Common Prayer. Third and finally, Anglicans are Catholic. Uh, a lot of uh, Anglicans, especially in the Anglican Church in North America, will articulate um, that they might be Anglo-Catholic, or they might say that I'm a not a capital C Catholic, like Roman Catholic, but I'm a lowercase c Catholic. 
which is to say that with most of the reformers, um, Christians in England, Anglicans, rejected many of the extravagances and the heterodox teachings in the Church of Rome, but they did not, um, so they were rejecting certain things, specific things, but they did not, um, again, with most of the magisterial reformers and the continental reformers, they didn't reject um, the tradition of the one holy Catholic or universal church. They rejected many points of Roman Catholic teaching because they were Catholic. Anglicans are not Roman Catholic, but because they were Catholic, they were receiving the tradition um, handed down through the ages. Um, they received this tradition and they wanted to guard it and keep it. They wanted to stay, they wanted to make claim and stay uh, Catholic, which is to say we're receiving the one universal teaching and tradition of the church. So Anglicans are centrally, they're Christian, they're followers of Jesus Christ. That is the central, um, that is the, the central idea, that is the central person, a central focus. And if we don't hold fast to the head who is Christ, um, then this whole Anglican thing will fall apart. It doesn't matter how missional we are. It doesn't matter how liturgical we are or historical or whatever we might we might define ourselves as if we're not holding fast to Jesus, uh, it falls apart. So Anglicans are Christian first and foremost. Anglicans are reformed. We love the Bible. We want all people, the priesthood of all believers, to get the Bible into their hearts and the minds. And the main way that we do that is through the Book of Common Prayer. And Anglicans are Catholic. Um, we we want to be in the whole church, the whole universal church, not only the church throughout the world. Um, who are in communion together, um, but also the church throughout time, um, the invisible church. And so um, that is the answer in a roundabout way. Um, and a lot of this is just getting started and, go, and we can go deeper in so many of these different categories. Let me know in the comments if you want me to go deeper in specific places. Um, go more deeply into GAFCON. Go more deeply into the Jerusalem Declaration. Maybe uh, what it means to be reformed or the 39 articles. Uh, let me know in the comments um, and we will go there. So I want to end with a word of encouragement for those who are uh, thinking about Anglicanism, um, thinking about this way of being a faithful G uh, follower of Jesus. It's not the only way to be a Christian, um, but it is a good way. Uh, it's a long-standing, um, effective way to be a follower of Jesus. And so uh, I want to end with a word of encouragement for those who are seeking. Um, don't just seek online. Don't just look for um, good teachers online or um, digital communities. Um, what it means to be a participant in Christ is to be a participant in the church, in the gathering. That's what that means. And so um, the best way to, to know what it means to be an Anglican is to go be with Anglicans, to gather together, to worship King Jesus around the table. Um, and to pursue holiness um, in the context of the local church. And so if you don't have an Anglican church near you, um, there are other churches that hold fast to Jesus. And so gather together, be with other people uh, who love Jesus um, and are pursuing him and are, are seeking to make him known and loved throughout the whole world. And so uh, that's my encouragement. Um, God bless you guys. I hope you have a great uh, rest of your day. Until next time.